could be somewhere else. You know, we're very grateful to you for turning up and doing what you're doing. Present company included. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. There's a question here, please. Let, let's, so, let's, let's go to the back on this side. There's two hands over there. Thanks. Sorry, Jane Monk from Etc. Magazine. A, a question for Brian. Do you think it's fair to say that the Spartacus film revived Trumbo's career? Do you well, think he, that was the film that really got him going again? Or was it both one? Uh, it was actually uh, a combination of Spartacus and uh, Exodus, when with with Otto Preminger and Kirk Douglas. But uh, it was Spartacus, the uh, the film when when he saw his name for the first time after 13 years uh, on a screen, and um, having Kirk stand up and risk what he did, risk financial ruin. Um, and potential uh, backlash and ostracism on his part um, truly was heroic on his part, what he did. And it, it was the contributing factor to break the, the blacklist. It didn't end immediately. It still continued to go on long, for quite until a long the time. the 60s, right? Yeah. Incredible. So that was 1960. And it wasn't for another three or so years uh, that it came to a complete end. And actually, it was a woman. I was reading. It was a, it was a women, women's organisation that finally put the nail in the coffin. I only read this recently, where they just made fun of them. They laughed at that. They, they were, they were so mocked by these women. Oh wow! Um, it's really. I can't remember the women's organisation. Maybe someone out here knows. One of you very clever journalists. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, but, but look it up on your on your Google it right now. Who put the final name? Which women's organisation? If someone does, feel free to shout. Yeah, it. and then feel feel free to shout it out. But it was um, it was really great to see that. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions at the back of the room. Yes, excellent. Okay. Hello, my name is Albert. Uh, I work for various Scandinavian media, and on uh, just to continue on this political um, surge. And I want to know uh, from the American actors, um, perhaps next year you have, of course, an election coming up uh, with some very interesting candidates. <laughs> Extreme, perhaps, even. Have you seen... Oh, well, you don't have interesting <laughs> candidates. <laughs> <laughs> um, but have you seen over the last year scripts that you've read, uh, have you seen perhaps more of a political movement in scripts uh, that they have more of a political theme. I'm saying that also because the opening two films of this festival have had a polit political theme, both. So Suffragette and this, uh, this film. So I guess the question is, is Hollywood more or less political than ever? Um, I think, you know, I think Hollywood has always been very political. I think, I think Hollywood is fascinated with politics and vice versa. Um, but I, I think it's circumstantial that uh, there might be, in any given year, uh, something, you know, films that are more political than, say, other years. I, I don't think there's an, certainly an agenda or any conferences like about a movement, which speaks to the whole story of Trumbo, that the House on American Activities Committee thought that there was collusion in Hollywood to, to promulgate communism through film. And it was a ridiculous notion. And it's all based on, on story and, and um, who's in power at any given time. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I think there's another question towards the back there, please. Yeah, hi, me. Yes. And then we'll come forward. OK. Uh, hi, Tim Oglethorpe, freelance. Uh, question. If I may, for Brian, um, it's a more trivial one than the last one, but the birds that your character works with in this movie, how did you manage to pull that off? How did you get on with them? And uh, especially the scene where you you're have the bird on your shoulder, I wonder how you managed to do that. Yes, that was great. Or is it all down to CGI? <laughs> Place the bird on my shoulder. <laughs> Uh, did it stay? Well, why 
It, I love that little bird. His name was Sloppy Joe. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he loved to preen. So I had the fake mustache. And so he would constantly be pecking at my mustache. And so we just incorporated that as if it were kisses. Uh, he would also dig into my ear. I don't know what he found in there that was so interesting. Um, <laughs> and then he would pick at my hair. He was very affectionate. And, and many times he would, he would rub against me. And I, was, uh, it was, I just fell in love with that little bird. And uh, I think it was funny when the, the scene with Otto Preminger, <laughs> he says, you know, I say my daughter thinks I can, you know, heal you know, fix the, the, the pain of all birds, and he says, so can I, with the broiler. <laughs> um, is that for, do you work for Aviary News or something? It's a mythology weekly. It's a question here in the middle, please. If we get the microphone, yes, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Alistair Lipstick from Empire. <clears throat> I just wanted to ask about working with Jay Wright, because um, I know you kind of look at the list of films he's made before, and it's quite, I think at first sight, it seems a surprising match for this story. Um, I know, John, you were saying about it's kind of a lot of fun to be done on a serious subject. Did it feel, when you were making this, that you were treating it just as a kind of out and out comedy, and you were going to let the, the message kind of speak for itself and <coughs> come through, or did you feel like there was quite a fine balance to be struck? Who's the question for? for which Sorry, I've got to say that's for anyone who would like to answer it. Um, if there were, no, I, from my small experience on the film, the, it certainly wasn't sort of shot as a comedy. And uh, we did a, a read through, didn't we? Mm. Um, a, 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 um, a few months, month or well, six months, I mean, before we, we shot. And, 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 and the approach in the read through was not. Um, necessarily comedic at all, but I think whenever you have a director with a with an in, inbuilt sense of humour, as Jay does, um, it just naturally comes out, you know, because uh, he can see the humour in things, you know, in, in normal everyday things. I think that's the best kind of humour, anyway, that's not built around jokes, but is just a built built around the absurdity of of human behaviour. Um, so, no, but I, I, didn't, I didn't feel that he was directing it as a comedy no. at all. No, in, in the States, uh, Jay also directed two very serious uh, political films, Game Change and, and uh, Recount, in, uh, in the States. And so he's, his body of work is, is spans both comedy and, and drama, just as uh, an actor wants to create that for themselves in their performance level. Mm. Thank you. Uh, is there another question around here, please? So, gentleman with a hand up. Hi. Uh, Ian Schultz from People's Movies. Uh, there's uh, no blacklist within Hollywood. There, uh, it, it, is there still blacklisting in Hollywood? I think, I think there is some self-imposed blacklisting in Hollywood. Um, you know, you could say Mel Gibson has, has done something. And, and any, Misbehavior is certainly that. Um, it depends on the on the sensitivity of of behavior mm -hmm. now. So if uh, if you have skeletons coming out of your closet that expose you to to abnormal behavior or uh, any kind of criminal behavior, um, yeah, you could put you could put yourself on that blacklist because um, people don't want to work with you. Uh, there was a time when uh, I was told that I was um, up for, this is many, many years ago, up for a film. And uh, I was very excited about it because it was a job. And uh, they said, uh, I, think, I think they're going to get uh, O.J. Simpson uh, to be in the movie too. And I went, oh, no, no. <laughs> No, and as actors started hearing about that, they started dropping out. Was this after? This is after, after yeah, this is after. Mm. And they start dropping out and the movie fell apart because it just wasn't, wasn't possible to sustain that kind of thing. 
thing. So um, I, I hope that there's, there aren't any uh, political blacklists. I hope there isn't any sexual orientation blacklist. Um, I think we're moving out of that as a society, and that's a great thing. Um, uh, it, it, it's probably, it, it, there's probably some lists of people who don't want to hire certain people. But for me, there's probably four people in this world I wouldn't want to work with again after 35 years. And they're all sitting at this table. And they're all sitting at this table. So a question, a question for me to all, or any of you, I can't imagine as actors it's possible to make this film without looking at some of the characters in this film and the, the real life characters in this film, the, the pressure that's put on their personal and professional lives and not think as actors now, what would I have done? what would have gone through my mind. I wonder if any of you could pick that up. What, 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 what was your answer to that? What, what, did, did you ask yourself that question? Sure. It <laughs> goes hand in hand with the selection. I don't know what I'd do. I hope I'd behave nobly, but I'm sure I would have caved like a, like something that caves. <laughs> <laughs> I, it is, of, of course, it's a question you ask yourself in, in doing something like a, a film like this. Um, and it would be just like this, wouldn't it? Because this is how they were. They had the microphone mm. like this. And they lean forward and say, uh, no. Or oh, what, what did Trevor always say? What did he say at the thing? At the, at the, at the, at the, uh, you mean what the question was? Yeah, there? no, what his answer is, you know, I, I don't have to answer, I, I take the fifth or whatever they say. Yeah, <laughs> so the first, yeah, he took the first. Oh, the first, I take the first, yes. Anyway, it was exactly like this, wasn't yeah. it? And I'm sitting at the table and I go, I don't know what I do. It's, it's a terrifying thought, it's awful. But it's, it's the thought you have about, you know, I just did a film called Woman in Gold, which was about the Nazi occupation of Vienna, and, and you do think, what would I have done then? Would I just walk, walked past when I saw a woman, a woman being forced to, to clean the pavement with a toothbrush? Would I just walk past thinking, oh, I can't deal with this, I'll just go home and make a cup of tea? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough question that we should all ask ourselves all the time. I think that's why um, Donald Trump is such a compelling character because he does the things that uh, certainly I would love to think that I would do given, you know, uh, being confronted with such obstacles. But I think um, a lot of it comes down to your circumstances as well. I mean, some of them had families, um, a lot more to sacrifice than others, but uh, I think ultimately, yeah, we don't, we don't really know. You never know what you do until you're confronted with it. You know. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to bring the press conference to the close, my friend. I wish you all good luck for the premiere tonight. Thank you to all our guests. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.